Now, the United Kingdom is looking more divided than united these days as Scotland and England clash over the Gender Recognition Reform Bill. The bill introduced by the Scottish National Party is designed to make it easier for people to legally change genders. Easier means that transgender people no longer have to have gender reassignment surgery or see a doctor and undergo any sort of treatment or even be over the age of 18. Yes, anyone over 16 can, under this bill, legally change their gender within three to six months. Now, Scotland actually passed this bill, despite the majority of Scots not wanting that, but the bill has been blocked uh, in the British government in what the Scottish First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, has called a direct attack. Fair to say the British government is in a bit of strife over the issue of trans rights. Or is it, as some protesters argue, a women's issue? Here is a clip that went viral last week of a female Conservative MP, Miriam Cates, attempting to protect women and children from those who would exploit the gender recognition certificate before being shouted down by an angry man. We shouldn't be asking how easy is it for someone who's uncomfortable with their sex to obtain a GRC. We should be asking how easy is it for a predator to get access to children. And I'm afraid this bill would make it vastly easier for a predator to get access to children, to change their sex, to change their gender, with an eye to exploiting loopholes of accessing children um, and women in particular. No, I'm going, I've only got four minutes. So. Um, it, the naivety that this has been written with is absolutely astounding and hugely worrying. For many women, the, the, the dignity of being a women-only space, of knowing that there's no men, there are no men that are going to be there, is so important. We will see a chilling effect on important single-sex uh, rights if this uh, goes through. Goodness me, that speech was probably one of the worst transphobic dog whistle speeches that I've heard in an awful long time. The idea of linking trans people with predators, frankly, is disgusting, and you should be ashamed. Oh, dear me. Lloyd Russell Moyle, you saw there, the angry one. He's a Labour MP, and it isn't the first time he's shouted down a female MP who dares to care about women's spaces. Fellow Labor MP Rosie Duffield, who also has been a victim uh, of his outbursts for defending women's spaces. She says his antics and intimidation have led her to conclude that Labor doesn't have a pro-trans position but an anti-women problem. But what do actual trans people think of all this? And are all trans people on the side of the activists? Are they pro-trans, anti-women, or do they think we can all get along? Joining me now is Debbie Hayton, a transsexual physics teacher and journalist. Welcome to the program. Firstly, Debbie, we are seeing politicians from the same party turn on each other over this gender recognition reform bill. What do you make of it? Well, it's mad, isn't it? You you saw the clip there of uh, Russell Moyle uh, <coughs> really condemning what Miriam Kitts had said. And all she was doing was defending the rights of women and the safeguarding of children. And what you actually didn't see, what came next was, he actually crossed the chamber and sat on the other side of the chamber, yes. which was on the government benches, and stared at Miriam Kitts in the face. If this isn't harassment in the workplace, I don't know what it is. And in, under what circumstances would that be tolerated if it wasn't for protecting trans rights? It seems to me that trans people have become this almost a sacred cast, class which can't be, you can't disagree with us, you can't criticise us. And, uh, and what's, what that means is that those who are seeking to be allies or supporting us, they're, they're immune from uh, criticism or being opposed as well. It's, uh, it's a dreadful situation which we found ourselves in. Absolutely, you're so right. And if you happen to be a trans person who, like yourself, puts forward a position that's a bit more nuanced, then you get attacked. It seems the only time you're allowed to attack a, a trans person is if they're not, uh, if they're disagreeing with with the activists and the excesses of the uh, of the of the movement. Um, but you're so right that the footage of Lloyd Russell Moyle moving over to the, the other side and then sitting uh, as close as he could. And, and trying to intimidate her, and yet he was so proud of his behaviour. He's the one who put 
that video up first onto social media. And it was only once he got the enormous backlash from people recognising it for what it was, bullying and intimidation, that he gave a sort of a half-hearted apology. But, no, he was very proud of himself initially. Um, now... This issue, it, it seems to be just one of the most divisive issues of, of our time. Uh, how do you feel about your rights as a transsexual person being turned into a political tool? It's been turned into a circus. Uh, I just wish you could wind the clock back mm. about 10 years to what the situation was then. We had the rights that we needed. We had the right to be protected against discrimination, being treated less favourably. Uh, we're uh, protected against hate crime. We've got special protections there. We've got extra rights than most people. And we were living our lives. Then all of a sudden comes this uh, political ideology, uh, which... Whether it's to whether it's to support trans people or to uh, or, or to displace women's rights completely by uh, removing the concept of biological sex from law is open to question. But what seems to me is it's not being a trans person that uh, is uh, is what is what's being defended here, but it's this ideology. There seems to be a move to remove biological sex from law and policy and replace it with this thing called gender identity. And gender identity is something that can't be. Uh, it can't be defined. It, we can't prove it. It's this nebulous, uh, nebulous, nebulous concept. But the impact is that it has a negative effect on women because their rights as women, which are protected through their sex, uh, is lost. And also, which I really do worry about as a teacher, is the impact on children. Because children are being told that they can mm. choose their sex. They can choose whether they grow up to be... Uh, boys grew up to be men or women. And that was part of what Miriam Kitts was speaking about in Parliament there. She has a valid point and we should be concerned about children. Oh, absolutely. Uh, not just uh, their spaces and women's spaces, but some of the medical treatments that are being offered to, to young children and, and the lifelong consequences of those treatments. Um, that's a discussion for another day. Debbie Hayton, thank you so much for joining me today.